August 30th, Mikhail Gorbachev has died at the age of 91. He died in the hospital while being treated for long-term illness. We will always remember Mikhail Gorbachev as our favorite Soviet president. He was president from 1988 to 1991. We will remember him for taking down the Soviet Union and establishing freedom there and for also putting on a most excellent Pizza Hut commercial. Thank you, Mikhail Gorbachev. You will be fondly remembered. And now a few words from Craig about Mr. Gorbachev. Thanks, Kareen. I just wanted to come on here real quick. Uh, we just, you know, heard this news this evening of Mikhail's passing. And uh, so I just wanted to share a few thoughts I had because uh, we were growing up, we were like in junior high when Gorbachev was like big on the world stage. And he was just an epic, just a giant figure. Like you couldn't turn on the TV without seeing Gorbachev. And he was just a big part of our, our growing up. You know, it was the whole Cold War with uh, Reagan versus Gorbachev, the U.S. and the versus the Soviet Union and the whole uh, East and West Berlin and all that. And um, I just want to say that um, it's just it's so interesting and fascinating to me that Gorbachev you know, turned himself into the last leader of the of uh, communist Russia, of the Soviet Union, I should say, uh, when he disbanded the Soviet Union and uh, just created freedom for so many people. And what a amazing act. Uh, how many dictators have we seen in our lifetime that just decide to basically give up the their you know communist regime and give freedom to their people? It's just almost unheard of. So I just wanted to mention that. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention another a uh, moment from my childhood that really jumps out, and that's in the silly comedy The Naked Gun with Officer Frank Drebin, who was uh, played by Leslie Nielsen, just a, a legendary actor. And there's this hilarious scene at the beginning of the movie where he uh, penetrates this uh, meeting of world leaders and he's, you know, punching out Arafat and all these other guys, and then he grabs Gorbachev and, like, le bends him over the table, and then he takes a cloth and wipes his little birthmark off of his forehead and it comes off and he looks at the camera and says i thought so or something like that but just hilarious because you know he had that was kind of his trademark he had this giant birthmark or whatever it was and uh that was just a a funny moment in, in uh, pop culture but uh you know what a great man um you know i'm sure he wasn't perfect as none of the world leaders are but just a remarkable gift he gave to the world in disbanding the the Soviet Union. Everybody was sure that the Cold War was going to end with nukes flying everywhere. And uh, it could have really gone south. But um, God, I think, put him in office at the right time um, so that uh, peace could prevail. So um, I just want to mention those thoughts I had and uh, may Mikhail Gorbachev rest in peace. Good morning and welcome to another edition of You News, where you are the reporter. And for today's top stories, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a boat and couldn't keep her. Hmm, what does that mean? And a fan, fan, uh, steals a home run ball from a teenager at a Royals game. And in the cryptocurrency market, is there any hope for Bitcoin? And finally, we'll have a fighting kangaroo pulls a wild move right out of a video game. A man in a pumpkin boat paddled 38 miles down the Missouri River in an attempt to beat a world record. In a story by Marco Margaritoff, Dwayne Hansen may have broken the Guinness World Record by paddling a 846-pound pumpkin he turned into a makeshift boat down the Missouri River. Mr. Hansen is a longtime Nebraska resident who enjoys growing large pumpkins, gourds, and other vegetables as a hobby. He came up with this idea when visiting Ohio and seeing another person attempt to set this record, which is currently around 30 miles. Hansen endured the 11-hour journey with a cup holder carved into the hull and S.S. Berta written on the back. <laughs> he has a cup holder in his pumpkin boat. <laughs> his Syracuse, Nebraska-based family and friends cheered him on from land. 
though some did trail behind him in an actual boat, just in case there were any problems. Hansen surpassed the record just before 3 p.m., nearly four hours before he arrived in Nebraska City. Guinness World Record spokesperson Kyle Galloway, his pronouns are he, him, and his, <laughs> told CNN they've since received his application, which will likely see Hansen crowned with the bizarre title. I just got an email with somebody who had his title, and then he had his pronouns. So now it's everywhere. All this madness is everywhere. I wanted to write back to him and make fun of him. <laughs> but I don't think it's his fault. I think it's the government imposing that. But in other news, the national average for a gallon of gasoline is 384. The Ooh. highest national average in Hawaii is 529 a gallon. And the lowest national average, once again, is in Arkansas at 334 per gallon. Wow. You know, if I was in Hawaii, you know what I would be singing? Dale menos gasolina. Because <laughs> we can't yeah. afford it. <laughs> Well, at least Hawaii, all the islands are rather small, so you're not going anywhere anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You could probably get there on foot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did see another story today that uh, Colorado, I, I believe it's the city of Denver, could be mistaken. They're actually giving uh, the, the Name city... Name a different city in Colorado than Denver. Pueblo... Oh, Colorado Springs, you Manitou sure? Springs, I don't really think Fort I could. Collins, <laughs> <laughs> Boulder, <laughs> uh, Loveland. Uh, yeah, what, I thought you were going to say Loveland. That's, that's the where, only one I could. That's name. where my parents lived at one point. Um, so anyway, some city in Colorado is actually giving people money uh, to buy electric bikes. You get a, a percentage, I think is what it is. They actually give you a voucher and you can take it right to a bike shop oh. and cash it in. And it, it depends on the, I guess how expensive the bike is, but you can get um, up to, I think it was $1,700 toward an e-bike or something. It was a pretty generous amount. I thought that is a great way to help people save on gas because a lot of times you don't want to ride your bike to work because you'll get there all sweaty and hot and exhausted. Whereas on an e-bike, which we absolutely love our yeah. e-bikes. You can just fly and use almost no energy. We, we can count the so. day that we started to gain weight as soon as we got those electric <laughs> bikes. <laughs> right? And once you ride an e-bike, I'll warn you, you'll never want to go back to a regular bike. Nope. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's a great, and I hope other cities will take note and get more people on bikes because, hey, that would save a lot of people a lot of gas and pollution and all that other stuff. So good job. Random Colorado City, probably Denver. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, in crypto news, Bitcoin can't seem to catch a break. It finally looked to be regaining strength this month, month uh, breaching $25,000 for the first time since its June collapse. But then it just relapsed back down towards 20000 A deflating end to August has forced the market to confront the big Bitcoin question. Where will a real rally come from right now? Retail investors are look like, looking like the most likely source of relief as institutional players are getting cold feet. While major institutions are selling their investments in cryptocurrency, those with smaller wallets are keeping their Bitcoin as a long-term investment. As this sector of the Bitcoin market grows, it will create a higher demand for cryptocurrency as availability drops. This looks to drive up the Bitcoin price once again, but it won't happen soon. It is a wait and see patience game for the small investor that just might have huge results. Kareem? In other news, a fighting kangaroo really puts on the moves. As you can see in the video, a couple of kangaroos were caught on camera in a quarrel that quickly got crazy. It's, it's not clear what the duo were dueling over. But one of the roos must have realized it was messing with the wrong marsupial when it was flung through a metal fence in a move that looked like something out of a video game. Beast or mode! Wrestling. <laughs> As this video shows, the victor even stops to stare down his foe. 
<laughs> kangaroos are awesome. Definitely one of the best videos I've seen all day. And I did see another video of uh, two deer bucks fighting, which was very compelling. So I might add that right here. <laughs> hey, do you remember kangaroos t uh, tennis shoes from back in the day? Those, I do. Those were awesome. Mm. Every pair had a secret pocket where you could hide your cash. Not so secret anymore. Good I, job. I wish they would make a comeback. All right. In another fight from the animal kingdom, a dirtbag fan steals a home run catch by... Uh, an 18 year old fan at the Kansas City Royals game. Aggravating video went viral this week of the man snatching the ball right out of the glove of a teen spectator at the game. The ball, hit by the San Diego Padres' newly acquired star, Juan Soto, sailed into the stands at Kauffman Stadium on Sunday, and Bruce Williams was waiting with his mitt at the ready. Williams was celebrating his 18th birthday and had predicted to a friend that he would catch a Soto homer. Fox 4 reported, but then a stranger snatched the ball right out of his glove as it rested in his glove and glared at Williams before turning and jogging away. Why? Thankfully, this nasty event led to a happy ending, though. The Royals got wind of this and... Gave Williams a ball autographed by Soto, plus another signed ball. They don't say by who. Maybe the Bat Boy. <laughs> I don't know. And threw in a bunch of bobbleheads for good measure. Mm, bobbleheads. That's the most agreeable group that you can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now for our Woman on the Street report, we go to... Corrine of seeamericaprojects.com hmm. to see what's going on in her neck of the woods. Corrine? Hi, this is Corrine from seeamericaprojects.com. On a countywide news, there was an earthquake here in Kansas in Jewell County. It was a 3.3 magnitude that happened last Sunday. I don't know if anybody felt it. I know I didn't, but here in local news, I am working on this massive behemoth and it is currently being changed from a drab gray color to a pretty bright blue color. It looks like an Easter egg. So come and see what they did on the side of the house. I'm so impressed with this company. It's run by Dan Schultz. So if you have any painting needs, go to Dan. He knows what he's doing. and. You see how big and massive this house is, and yet they're getting every little corner and crevice doing a fine job. So that is the local news from here in Mankato, Kansas. Now back to you, Cornfed. Thanks, Kareem. <laughs> that was an inspiring story, and make sure to check out her channel in the links below if you want to follow the full remodel of that house. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Keep sending in those videos so you don't have to see familiar faces like ours out there on the beat <laughs> reporting. Right. And let's get some more of you on the air. All right. Have a blessed day and we'll see you on the next one. 